Kalau kita tidak mau berubah, kita akan ditinggal oleh perubahan. Joko Widodo, commonly known as Jokowi, was born on June 21, 1961 in Surakarta, Central Java, Indonesia. Before entering politics, Jokowi had a successful career in the furniture export business, earning him the nickname the furniture entrepreneur. His rise in Indonesian politics began at the local level, where he served as the mayor of Surakarta from 2005 to 2012. Many Indonesians connected with Jokowi's leadership styles because of his dedication to tackling issues that directly affect the common people and his down-to-earth demeanor. He was elected as the Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle PDIP, presidential candidate in 2014 and became the country's seventh president after a historic election. Under Jokowi's leadership, Indonesia has improved its international standing, attracted foreign investment, and streamlined its bureaucracy. Because of his pragmatic approach and dedication to inclusive development, he has gained popularity both domestically and abroad. During his tenure as President of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, also known as Jokowi, has been recognized for various leadership qualities. There are three main Jokowi leadership qualities. Jokowi is known as an empathic, visionary, and innovative leader. The first leadership quality of Jokowi is empathetic leadership. Empathetic leaders display a genuine concern for their team members, whether it is their emotional health, the challenges they may face, or even showing interest in their life. Empathy for the feelings or suffering of others is one of the characteristics that stand out in Jokowi leaderships. When there was a big flood in Provinsi Kalimantan Selatan on 18 January 2021, Jokowi plugged into disaster areas to insist on being given aid and to share in the suffering of the flood victims. Besides, Jokowi is also known as a visionary leader. A visionary leader is an individual with a clear idea of how they envision the future. In this role, a leader may set concrete steps to plan and execute a vision and lead a team towards accomplishing its goals. This visionary leader is shown by Jokowi by the fact that he often conducts inspections and give directions to employees on how to work professionally in carrying out government tasks and delivering public services. Apart from that, Jokowi is also known as an innovative leader. Innovative leadership is a style of leadership that involves applying innovation and creativity to managing peoples and projects. This quality of leadership is shown in the inspection of Central Lampung Road Reconstruction Project on October 27, 2023, which is a testament to Jokowi Innovation to provide the best public facilities for the villagers. Jokowi Three Main Achievement People Centric Governance Jokowi is renowned for his participatory and people focused style of leadership. 
He frequently makes spontaneous trips to different areas, interacting with people there to learn about their needs and worries. Jokowi emphasized the importance of leaders prioritizing the interests and concern of the people they serve. By hearing the voice of the people, he likely suggests that leaders should actively listen to the needs, aspiration, and feedback of the general population. This implies a commitment to engaging with citizens, understanding their perspective, and incorporating their inputs into decision-making processes. Effective local leadership. Jokowi held position as Jakarta governor and mayor of Surakarta Solo before taking office as president. Effective urban policies enhance public services and a dedication to local development were hallmark of his success in this role. Jokowi served his seven-year tenure as the mayor of Surakarta before taking up the job of Jakarta governor in 2012 during which time he turned Central Java's second largest city from a safe haven for terrorists into a popular international destination showcasing Javanese culture. People of Surakarta consider him to be a successful mayor that they stage a protest to prevent him from running for the Jagada governorship in 2012 agreeing that they still wanted him to lead the city until his term expired in 2015. Jokowi was elected Jakarta governor in 2012 but only served for two years as he was nominated as a presidential candidate by the Indonesia Democratic Party of Struggle PDIP in 2014. Reform in the Economy As a leader, Jokowi has concentrated on economic reform to draw in foreign capital and expedite bureaucratic procedures, creating an atmosphere that supports the expansions and developments of businesses. For Indonesia, the pandemic serves as a period of self-improvement by laying new foundation for stronger and sustainable growth, while continuing to reform the economic structure and improve business climate according to President Joko Widodo. We have improved investment, ecosystem, and ease of licensing. We have provided legal certainty and special incentive for priority investment sector. President Jokowi said in his remark at the World Economic Forum State of the World Address we held virtually Tuesday, 20 January. Indonesia, the president continue also continues to improve human capital quality through various programs, ranging from upskilling, reskilling, establishing polytechnics in collaboration with industry and collaboration with universities abroad. Indonesia also continues to boost infrastructure development to increase investment and create favorable business climax. We will continue to develop new sources of growth, especially the green economy, including the development of electric vehicle industry ecosystem and the development of the largest green industrial area in North Kalimantan. He said. President Jokowi further said that the government will also continue to strengthen collaboration with the private sector, adding that investment in six priority sector will be open in a larger, wider scale. Named export-oriented, labor-intensive industry, renewable energy infrastructure, automotive tourism, and mining. The government, he added, has also prioritized a number of development, including increases food production to food estate development, implementation of low-carbon development concept, and transforming the digital economy through expansion, equity, and improvement of the quality of digital infrastructure and service. Dia meyakinkan masyarakat bahwa kita mampu, bahwa Indonesia mampu, bahwa pemerintah mampu, bahwa rakyat mempunyai daya saing dengan negara-negara yang lain. Harus diyakinkan itu. Bekerja harus optimis. Bekerja tidak boleh pesimis.